So for this next installment in the How to Bend PVC series, we'd like to go a little bit further into sleeving up. We're not actually going to put much new information in this, we just like to show 2 inch PVC being bent by a half inch bender. What I've got here is a regular half inch 9 foot bender from PVC Bendit, sleeved up with a 1 and a quarter inch piece of metal hose over the top of it. This allows you to do larger diameter bends just by uh, kind of putting that heat a little bit closer to the surface of the pipe. So, since you've received most of this information already, let me just get straight to it. What you do, put the pipe, what we have is 2 inch Schedule 40 PVC. This is just like the stuff you'll get at the hardware store. Very good pipe. Drop it on the bender. Close the bend stations. And wait. Now you'll hear this a million times, but this process happens pretty quickly and it's hard to predict just how fast it's going to happen. So you really don't want to stray too far away from your bender. Like by the time you go check your email and make a phone call and get a drink of water and all of that stuff, you may come back and find a burned pipe. So whenever you're using this and whenever you've actually got a pipe on the bender, you want to stay in the immediate area. So just keep yourself busy for a few minutes and before you know, it'll be ready to go. One nice thing about sleeping up is that the sleeve allows a slightly lower temperature to contact the pipe than what it would have been without it, a bare bender. And so you don't have to rotate quite as often when you're sleeving up to a larger diameter in order to avoid those rail lines along the inside of the pipe. And for non-plumbing applications for electrical conduit and things like that, it's not really not that big of a deal. But if you're going to run water through it, you want the inside of the pipe to be as smooth as it originally was, or else there's not much of an advantage. And it's very easy to pull off when you're using a sleeve. And all you've got to do, the same as any other bend, is just kind of keep an eye on it and don't wander too far away. diameters of pipe will take longer amounts of time to bend. And for that reason we also do make a dual element wider B size model so that if you don't have the patience to deal with this we can build you one that is larger and it actually just puts out more heat and it also allows you to sleeve up even larger sizes to get it done. But the thing is that the wall of this pipe is just a little bit larger than the wall of a smaller pipe and so it does take more time for it to cook through. But this does also mean that you have a much, much stronger piece at the very end. So it really is worth the time. Now on a pipe this size, I really don't recommend that you touch it with your bare hands until you're really used to the heat. Smaller pipes, when you're rotating it inside of here, you can definitely do that barehanded and you're not going to have much of a problem. But with a pipe this size, until your hands are ready for the heat, don't touch it. You'll know it's so big, you'll know when it's getting soft through your gloves. And even though I'm not using gloves for this part right now, when bending pipes larger than one and a half inches, you want to put your gloves on pretty much every time you touch it, even when you rotate it. Don't let the fact that I'm doing this like this make you think that you can do that right away, because you really can't. This is hot stuff, so be careful. This is definitely not as soft as it can get, but this is soft enough to do things that you could not do before. So this is that same 2 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Oh man, it is now a noodle. 
something to notice about these, and it went through this on the last one, but I can't stress it enough, is that this material has some limitations. They're not bad, though. You can see, you can bend this quite a ways, but there you have a kink. Now, this sort of thing, and we've been through this last time, but it can be removed just by putting a little pressure on it, and the kink will go away. But once you bend beyond a certain point, you're going to get it. Now this, let's take a look, see if you went like here, you're starting to have a great greenhouse frame piece, you know, you're starting to have, you could even build a shed out of it if you really wanted to, but the further you get, the larger pipe you get, the sturdier structure you're going to get. Now when this thing's all done, this is going to be a wicked, wicked piece of tool here. Not really doing this for any purpose, but you can see if you were to extrapolate this arc out and just keep going with it, this would make a very large greenhouse section. And you're able, if you wanted to, to integrate watering into the frame because of the pressure loads that this will take and all of the above. But you could also do things like an electrical conduit offset if you've got to get around something. You can make your offsets smoother. Now this I'm not really trying. We'll go through that in the future and we'll set a form and show how to do it properly. But everything, plumbing, vent stacks, and pretty much you name it, can be done. Now I doubt you have the patience to watch this soften, but usually within about two to three minutes after you're done bending, your pipe is going to be just as hard as it was originally.